A Christmas tradition that I really treasure is something that I've done since I was a child with my family every Christmas Eve. After carol service and coming home and having her chocolate, we would all sit in my mum and dad's bed, all six of us, um, and probably some animals as well, and we would sit and we would read a story. And every year we would read the same story. So even though I've heard this um, many times over the years, every year I'd be excited to sit and listen. Two, the night before Christmas. Many of you might be familiar with this, it's quite a popular Christmas story for children. Um, and as we would read this, it would really fill me with excitement and anticipation for the next morning, for Christmas Day, to wake up, um, go and see what Santa had brought, and to spend the day with my family. And as an adult, my mum actually bought me my very own copy of this book. And it's a tradition that Paul and I have carried on. Um, and every Christmas we sit together in bed and we read the night before Christmas. And it's something I hope to do for many years to come. Um, and it made me think about the first Christmas Eve, the night before Jesus was born, and the shepherds um, sat on the hill looking over their sheep. And it made me think, I wonder if they told each other stories um, to pass the time, you know, to keep themselves warm. Um, and that reminded me of how the story of Jesus had been told for years and years and years before he was born. Um, his birth was prophesied and people would um, tell the story to each other to keep this excitement um, for the day that the Saviour would come um, and be born on earth. And so when I read The Night Before Christmas, even though it's about Santa, <laughs> it really reminds me of the anticipation and excitement that that would have been felt before when Jesus was born. And um, it just fills me with hope and joy that we get to celebrate that day every year. Looking back on memories of Christmas uh, takes me back actually to the 70s. Um, I spent a year in Israel and so Christmas Day in 1977 was in uh, on a kibbutz in the northern part of Israel. And it was a normal working day for the Israelis. Uh, the buses were running, the shops were open as a part of a group of volunteers who were Christian um, or from Christian countries. We were given the day off uh, because it was Christmas and we were given, I remember, um, a bag of goodies, chocolate, sweet biscuits. Um, so I remember going that day with my roommate Jan, we got on the bus and we went to Haifa, which was the nearest big commercial centre, um, a big city on the coast, and we spent the day shopping. And that seemed to me quite bizarre at the time, having spent every other Christmas at home with my family up to that point. Um, a little bit later, I went with um, some other church family. I, I was attending a church in Nazareth, that was the nearest church to where I lived, uh, on the kibbutz. And I went with the pastor and his wife there, uh, travelled down to Jerusalem, to their sister church in Jerusalem, and we celebrated Christmas about a couple of weeks after Christmas Day. We had a Christmas meal there together with a group of Christians. Uh, my abiding memory of that was sitting at uh, the dinner table, everything on, on the table, the turkey and everything on the table, and also there was this bowl of green jelly with, I seem to remember, marshmallows on the top, and there were two young children there, and one of them turned to me and um, said, can I have some jelly, please? And I said, oh no, that's for pudding later. Uh, so she gave me a bit of a withering look and turned to one of the other adults at the table and said, can I have some jello, please? And she said, yeah, sure, and scooped up this green jelly and slopped it in the middle of the turkey gravy. That's, that's uh, yeah, my, my main memory of uh, that occasion. The only other thing that, thinking of back to Christmas, do you know what really comes to me is just that smell of Christmas tree on Christmas morning. We always, as a child, and as bringing up a family of my own, and, and even now for my grandchildren, I always have a real Christmas tree. That to me is an important part of Christmas, is that smell of, of real pine in, in the house. Okay, I have to admit that not much of that links in with the scripture verse, but I want the scripture I want to look at is Matthew uh, chapter 2, reading from the first verse, and I'll, and I'll read from there. 
after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out for them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped near the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, incense and myrrh. The only tenuous link is being a non-Jew in Jerusalem. Um, the, this story to me just throws up so many questions, doesn't it? Where did that come from? How did they, where did this star come from? How did they know it related to a king of the Jews? The, these were non-Jews. Why didn't the Jews see that? The star in the sky, everyone can see it. And how does a star pinpoint a house in Bethlehem? How does that happen? I just love it when God just chucks in these stories and it's almost like, oh, for goodness sake, you'll find out one day. Why do you have to know the answer to everything? But this particular story for me just is, it's, um, it's, part, but it's part of that graphic picture of Christmas. Um, part of what we see in the nativity place, don't they? We wear it's been become the three kings, although of course unlikely that the Magi were there at the same time as the shepherds, that most likely from the story it indicates that they came some time after. But we have this wonderful story and the picture of the star over the manger as well. The, 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 the visuals that this story gives us is so wonderful. So that's it. Bye. Hello and welcome to my talk about Christmas. So my name's Paul and I'm going to talk to you about what Christmas means to me. Now I have memories of Christmas as a child, the usual trees and tinsel and lights and all the festive things that everyone remembers. But for me, Christmas as a child was slightly different. I grew up in a pub in a village, um, which meant our time scale for Christmas was a little bit different to everybody else's. Um, Often meant press presents were upstairs in the lounge above the pub where we had a quick quick fire round of presents, mum keeping everybody on track, seeing what we'd got. Um, with my stepdad in the background quietly, unwrapping paper, peeling sellotape off, neatly folding the paper up, because um, you never know when you might need it. I am convinced mum used to just pick up the pile and put it in the bin, but it made him feel better. Um, but it's full of joy and wonder uh, as to what was in the presents and um, the whole joy of Christmas and family being together. Um, and then it was time for Christmas Day opening for the pub where we'd open the doors for just a few hours to welcome the locals in and talk about Christmas and I could talk to the people of the village about the presents I got and what I was looking forward to over the Christmas period and just a time of fun and joy and laughter. Uh, and then it was time to close the pub and time for food, Christmas dinner, food in abundance as it always was. And then an evening in front, in front of the telly, um, watching films, having that debate, can I be bothered to go downstairs and eat something else or shall I just fall asleep on the sofa? And I remember Christmas hampers from my grandma filled with exotic foods from Germany, um, things like chocolate, um, Leiberkuchen and... Um, chocolate and marzipan dominoes that I would go to school with in January and share with my friends. Um, these foods that at the time, Little and Aldi didn't exist. Um, so these were taken off a, a market stall and, and shared with my friends. Um, the thought of receiving a hamper uh, like the one I did from my grandma uh, reminds me of the gifts brought to Jesus by the wise men. And we see in Matthew 2, 9 to 11, after they heard the king, 
They went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presents they brought for him and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And Jesus was the Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us, the one that had been prophesied about. The newborn king that will put right the relationship between us and God. In fact, um, even though Jesus was worshipped um, and gifts were brought to him, he himself was the most amazing gift. The child from a loving father, desperate to be in relationship with his children. And during the Christmas time, as you open your presents and share gifts, please spend some time uh, remembering the best gift ever given. Not one from Amazon or advertised on TV, as I remember as a child from the Argos catalogue, but the one that God gave, the one of his son Jesus, who was born and died so that we can have life and life in abundance. So this year, as we tell Matthew, our son, all about the story of Christmas. I look forward to telling him about Jesus and how he was born in a stable, so silent and still. Yet he came as a gift so that we might tell of the good news from heaven that now is all well. Merry Christmas to you all. May you know peace and goodwill at this time. Blessings upon you and your family. Have a very good Christmas. What does Advent mean to me? Well, growing up in a non-Christian house, as a child and as a teenager, it was always about what, what we were getting. The toys, the presents, the money. It it was awesome, you know. As a, as a, as a kid, you... you you didn't know anything else. You just knew that that time was year of year was. It was about what you was getting. But um, when I become a Christian, it all changed. When you started reading the Word, you realised that giving is getting. You're storing up your treasures in heaven. Family, silly games, it, it was all about memories. It, your focus changed. And it was a you know, it was a time to be thankful for the blessings that God has given you all year. We don't realise that God is always looking out for us. In a way, Christmas is every day. He has blessed us so much, given us so much. And all we should do is be so thankful. So for me, it's, it's a time of year to reflect on, on what God has given us and to give back to God. Praise God for all he has done. God bless. Good morning and welcome to my Advent Reflection. As a young boy, and yes I was young once, Christmas meant three things. It meant presents, it meant a family football match, and it meant a family gathering, and for us a family gathering was as many as 30 people. Of course, presents were the most important thing of all. Which brings me to where do you stand on presents? Are they for the many or just a select few? Are you organised and all purchased by the end of February? Or are you a last minute Christmas Eve rush followed by a present wrapping frenzy in order to get them to Father Christmas in time for his visit? I have to say that Diane would always want to start early although probably not in February, whilst I always feel there's plenty of time. 
Together, however, we usually manage to get them wrapped for delivery in time every year. And no doubt this year is going to offer its own challenge. All of which turn my thoughts to how God approached his own choice of a present to the world. He wasn't limited by resource, so his choice could be wide ranging. It had to be special as he wanted to catch everyone's attention. But it had to be truly meaningful and useful as well. He may well have considered a, a, a choice of things. A beautiful world that no one could damage, contaminate or spoil. A just world where everyone was treated fairly with compassion, consideration and concern. A self-repairing world that continually and continuously puts itself right, no matter what's done to it. And I've no doubt you could add your own possibilities as well. However, what he considered, he quickly abandoned in favour of just one super special present, the gift of his own son, Jesus. And what better way to deliver this present than as the first baby born to a young lady in a very special part of the world and one of his especially chosen people, the people of Israel. A baby who we are told would become the saviour of the world. We are the very happy recipients of that wonderful gift. And so just three passages from the beginning of John's Gospel that tell us so eloquently of that gift. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness hasn't overcome it. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. And finally, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. May you have a very blessed and happy day today. Bless you. Hello. Um, we're just popping on to do our Advent video. Um, and what have we made, Ebs? Mm. Can you remember what it's called? Yeah. What is it? Mm. It's called a wreath. Yeah. So we've done it a bit different, haven't we? Yeah. We've, what did, how did we make it? Ooh, how did we make it? Can you remember? Mm. Cut her hands. Yeah. And we did these. Elbows. Yeah. And leaves. Yeah. So. We stuck them all on, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Um, so it looks a bit like this. It's very shiny. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is something that I used to do with Nanya. Oh, uh, yeah. And I did that with Nanya as well. Yeah, you could. You could ask Nanya. Um, and so I thought it'd be fun yeah. if I carried on and did it with you and Ada. Yep. Yeah. Is that a good idea? Yeah. So we've simplified it um, and we've just chosen four words to go with each candle and you're holding the cards, aren't you? Yeah. So what, what are the different cards? What's that one? What does this one say? Um, love. Yeah. Do you want to show the camera? Love. Yep. Yeah. What's love. the next one? Nice. Hope. Hope. Can you show the camera? I just saw the camera. Oh, did you? Sorry. What's the next one? And what's this? Joy. Joy. That's it. And what's the last one? And 
us this. Peace. Peace. So that's the four words that we've uh, chosen. Um, just to simplify it, um, as Obi and Ada are a little bit young, um, so we can try and understand it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, I hope whatever you guys do this Christmas, um, whether you have your own traditions um, or you're just starting some new ones this year like us, um, I hope you have an amazing Christmas. Um, although it'll be a bit different, won't it, this year? Yeah. Um, but stay safe and <laughs> stay cosy <laughs> and enjoy. Shall we say happy Christmas? Yeah. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Bye. Bye. <laughs>